Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to discuss how your peaking habits are actually getting you eliminated and costing you rank points. So let's just begin. Now what you're seeing is probably the most basic peak that you're going to see on Apex Legends, but it's going to be the reason what we're going to break down of why it is bad. Whenever you're peaking this angle, it actually showcases your full body, unfortunately. Now your full body, we're going to showcase now quickly what it looks like from behind ideal cover. So let's go to showcase that real quick now. Now, even though the cover is not ideal, what Nyx is going to show us is whenever she can hide behind this little box and pillar, how it does cover at least half the body and more of the body compared to just peaking a wide angle. Now, it is more ideal. We're going to show this from a height perspective later and what this benefits. So let's go back to discussing why in general this peak is bad. So let's come back over here. Now, peaking here, the unfortunate circumstance is that the recoil does bounce up and you do have pretty much the whole body as long as you hold your crosshair at this angle. Now let's say you're in the unfortunate circumstance where you had to take a bad peak. Let's talk about some of those tips and what you can do. The ideal scenario is that once you do sufficient damage, let's say Nyx did damage to me at this point and I'm back at cover, that Nyx immediately has to push to secure this space and get this knock if nobody else is nearby. Now the reason why you want to do that is that if you are doing significant damage but allowing them to reheal, then you're wasting that opportunity. That's number one. Number two, Patience can also be a powerful asset. Let's say that we are both in this scenario, taking peeks at one another, doing a little bit of damage, but then you wait them out and wait for them to get impatient. It, if you are in the scenario to counter the bad peeker, you might peek a different angle, even though your peak is also not ideal. That's two. Now, number three, we talk about this being a pre-fire. You know that they're always going to peak the same spot. Players are not going to do this. So, Nix, if you don't mind, just go and peek out just a little more this way. Players are not going to just stand out in the open. They're always going to hug their geometry and box as much as possible. So you always want to hold your crosshair right at the angle that you believe that they're going to be at. So then you can pre-fire them and shoot. Let's say, for example, you're using a Havoc. You can pre-fire that and then fire that corner. Individuals are not going to stand out in the open. Let's just reiterate that again and shoot you from this weird angle because that's going to be giving up their position. Now, these are tips if you are in a worst case scenario and you happen to be in a scenario where Horizon's at and you just don't have ideal positioning. So you may be asking the question, Daz, how do I avoid this position? Well, you have to know the spacing in the area very well to avoid this area. Maybe perhaps you wanted to get to this other position much sooner. But if you happen to be unfortunate positioning where you didn't consider this, that this would occur, then just take a mental note, VOD review, and say, you know what, when the zone ends this way, we want to be in this position instead so we have height. Now, let's discuss height next, because that's a great segue. So again, in this section, we're going to break down height. The power of height means that you can peek from multiple angles. And that's where we're going to talk about the art of the double peek and surprising your opponent and getting the jump on them. So the most natural place that individual players want to play is hugging the angle and then shooting here but if you have more options at your disposal then you're going to be able to surprise your opponent and also juke them so if you have height you're able to duck out of height you'll see here and then surprise them and nick's going to peek from another there you go peek from another spot to throw them off and have them adjust their aim and also bait them from their sprays for their shots and much more there's a lot of power when it comes to height but we're also going to talk about how you can counter this from the low ground so everything i'm going to teach you today there's always a counter and this is where you start to play mind games with your opponent and i encourage you as you learn how to peek better that you start to do this so you can play more patient up top you can use the tips that we had earlier to also your advantage so remember, you can pre-fire and do a quick peek. You can show patience. And of course, if this wasn't ideal, then you peek from a whole nother spot. Now, let's say we want to counter this. The beauty of this, even though they have height, now I can keep my hitbox small from a low ground. So we're going to segue this to low ground and we're going to swap positions here. And you're going to even see an extreme version. So I'm going to get height. And you're going to see the power of that by looking at the hitbox. Remember we mentioned how the hitbox needs to be as small as humanly possible. Now, you can do that by hugging the back of the box rather than wide peeking on the left or the right, depending on where you're looking at. So that would have been my left and that right. So you don't want a wide swing. We call this, I, I consider this a wide swing. You can call this exposing more of your body. Whatever terminology you personally want to use to understand it, the goal is to not stand out in the open and showcase more of your body. So now that you've seen it from that example, even if you're on low ground, let's say all the way over here, let's showcase what that looks like. So now let's give an example of, let's say the zone is closing here and you happen to be low ground. 
Let's take everything that we have learned so far, such as that quick peaks, those pre-fires and holding different angles. But realize you don't have to peek wide here. And this is what costs a lot of individual players is that they'll ego out, but how you work space and how you can work your way in. Remember, my hitbox is gonna look a lot smaller from here. And we're gonna showcase this from the other POV. It's gonna look smaller here as you work your way up. But of course, as you do damage and they're healing, you can start to secure space and then Refire them and peek and then find your opportunity. This is where you can start to use grenades right here, push them out, and then you can go for a flank and reposition. So let's look at that from the other POV and what it looks like from Horizon and me being on height. So even though height does have a lot of strength to it, it can also be a really weak spot because more of my body is technically exposed here. See how their hitbox is extremely small? Now go and peek wide on the angle there. And we'll see that most individual players make this mistake by peeking wide or even hugging this geometry right here and making that mistake. Let's say I have to heal for a few seconds and they move up to the next spot that I moved up to. As they move forward and I heal and then I peek again, I don't know where exactly they went, right? But now they can peek me from another unique spot and start moving from there. So remember the box in the back had that opportunity, this had this opportunity, and even this had this opportunity to continue to secure space and move forward. So don't look at low ground as a missed opportunity, but also an opportunity to counter the height. There are some downsides, of course. If you are on height, you can throw grenades to slow down their space. You can throw horizon ult. You can use your own utility, such as a Maggie tactical to start to counter these individuals. So now what we covered as a quick recap is making sure that you don't peek wide on angles. And if you do, it means that you're going for the ego play and you're confident that you can win your fight, that you're trying to keep your hitbox as small as possible, even if it means hiding behind something that is really, really small. Now, ideally you don't wanna be there because you're, you wanna have some movement to be able to re-peek from multiple angles like we discussed from height or from low ground to surprise them a little bit. And also that patience, let's say you wait them out just a little bit, maybe they get distracted by another third party or another team. You can maintain your pressure by just waiting out the situation and to see what is going to happen. So now you've seen the power of height versus low ground. And what we're gonna talk about next is gonna be a wide peak. So let's go ahead and discuss that now. So now in this scenario, what we're gonna break down is the power of holding an angle and positioning, but how you can work your way in and what opponents do to secure that space to move forward. Let's say for example, they're breaching the door and now you've kind of lost your positioning because they're using the console against you. Now your opponent, it's in their best interest in what I call a wide swing or you can call it a push. Now, the reason why once they get that crack, why they wanna pretty much go for this and move forward to secure the space, to even move to the next spot right here is because they wanna garner that space to maintain pressure. They'll say I got cracked, I moved back a little bit. They want to pretty much wide swing and move over. I call this a wide peak, a wide swing, whatever terminology you wanna use, but it is a tool that you can utilize to secure your knock, but also secure space to the next spot right here. There's a lot more areas and space that you can use for cover to keep your hitbox smaller than you realize. And I really want all of you guys to start thinking outside the box and what could be cover and garner you that advantage. Even these railings, a lot of individual players will accidentally hit the railings and you'd be surprised what areas you can find that can really get that jump on your opponent. And remember, based on what you're holding and how you're holding this space, that you don't give up the, the positive areas when you want to hold them out. Let's say you're in a scenario right here where you're literally holding the door against one another and this is like the worst case scenario. So Nyx is gonna hold the opposite end. This is the part where you're peeking, and let's say you got more of the damage in, that's when you go for the wide swing, if you know they're isolated, to move back in and secure that knock, right? But be sure that you're aware of where the enemies are located, if they're holding height, and what they're doing, if you're gonna go for a quick peek, if you're gonna go for the wide peek instead, to throw off your opponent to make that happy. You can even go for a wall bounce, or a fatigue wall bounce, if you will, to bounce around the corner, gotta do that properly, there you go. And you can do that, or you can tap straight around the corner, or you can do just a simple wall bounce around the corner and not run into your opponent. So you gotta time that well and then bounce around and decide how you're gonna approach the situation. That's a different kind of peak, I call that a peak with movement, and that can definitely help in this scenario. So let's say you're in the scenario where you have to peak as well, and this is gonna be the last tip I'm gonna give you, is called slicing the pie. Slicing the pie means keeping your cone of vision as small as possible until you can see your opponent. And you can do the same thing such as slicing the pie to cover corners, look for information, keep your crosshair as close and steady as possible. Now I'm gonna talk about the downside of slicing the pie, is that what most individual players do is they kind of take the Rainbow Six of Siege and Valorant and CSGO a little bit too far, and let's say you got the crack, but they'll keep slicing the pie 
and let them back up to a better position. And you have to keep slicing the pie. And you'll notice what happens is now you are in a disadvantage. Thank you so much for moving that spot. That was actually brilliant. Moved into it organically there. Because then now you are out in the open from slicing the pie. And you have to realize in Apex, it's all about speed, timing, and momentum forward. Momentum and how you maintain momentum and pressure is key. And if you're slicing the pie and doing it too slow, you have to realize when slicing the pie has garnered you the victory versus when you need to tie it with a wide peak and movement to get to jump on the opponent and secure the knock. So just be very mindful of that. I see that happen with a lot of console players and PC players that spend a lot of time in Valorant Rainbow Six Siege is that they'll get the crack and they'll keep wide peaking. But now when you look at this, you're at a disadvantage and now you are just standing out in the open. So keep that in mind when it comes to your peaks because I promise you it's going to cost you a lot. Now let's get even more advanced and we're going to go over to Lava Fissure and we're going to break down how you can predict where people are going to peak from. Let's go over there now. Now what you're going to find interesting is that the tactics that we have all discussed are not the most flashy or the most interesting, but they're going to be the most vital to ensuring that you can win your encounters that are utilized by predators, by pro players. And if you want to rank up, probably the player that just beat you in an encounter. So this is a really strong position to peek from because you can remember control your peak. But of course, the downside, they can see you a little bit through the glass. So you got to have to maybe peek a little further down. We also have this nasty spot to peek from. But what I'm going to discuss is how do you know where an opponent is going to peek from and what their options are going to be available to you? So when peeking this other building, there's only a few options of which an opponent can peek. They can peek if they're outside the building. They can peek the right side of the pill or the left side. They can peek the door. They can peek the roof. They could peek the side over here. They could peek the side over here. And that's pretty much it if they're holding the building. Now, once they leave the building, their options become a little bit more limited. Let's say they left the building and went over to the boxes, right? Any one of the boxes. Now, when you look at the boxes, they could peek from the left side, the right side, or above. That is it. That's the only spot that they can peek from. So remember that knowledge and how they can peek and what they're going to do. And you can pre-fire based on playing those mind games and really juke them and surprise your opponent and maintain a lot of pressure. Have you ever felt the pressure from an opponent that is pre-firing you or shooting you and you just feel like you can't peek anywhere? It's because they're all already holding their crosshairs at those designated spots. Now, the hard part is when they back up a little bit and they use that low ground thing technique that we just taught earlier right? That could be a little harder. And when you maintain pressure back, then you back up and now you're really fighting and they can start to scale. Now you may be asking the question is like, how do I know where to look and where to peek from? Let's give an example as well, because I've seen this end zone many, many times in Apex Legends. Let's say the zone is pulling towards this building because this is a very strong spot. There's a team here. There's a team here. There's a team here. There's a team here. Now with that many teams all maintaining pressure, most likely you're going to be inside the building. But let's cut down some of these teams just a little bit and say that there's only a team here and a team here in a top three situation. You know, without a shadow of a doubt, they could either pick here, 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 here. And then same thing when you look over here, if they're all in the building, then the pill here, 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 here. There's only, it's limited. As you start to think through the game a little bit more, it's not about racing your aim to win that encounter. It's about playing it patient, but also having the knowledge and game sense to know where they're going to peek from right? There's only so many spots they're going to peek from and where you can pre-fire and shoot and where you believe opponents are going to be at, right? And taking your best guess at it. When you take your best guess, you're going to learn from habit of what are good spots to peek from. Yes, they may peek from the door a lot, but as they start to move out and start to get a little creative, you'll start to realize, wait a minute, this is a higher level team. This is a team that's really thinking outside the box. Maybe they start using the, the this here, the pill box and open it and start using it for a little bit more cover. So now keeping that in mind and looking at the, the hitbox, you can start to gauge this is an opponent that's a lot smarter or this is an opponent that doesn't know how to play. And you can start to gauge this team is a threat or this team is a threat. If you notice that this person is using great cover, you can't push that. This team knows what they're doing. If you notice that these people are standing more out in the open and wide peeking a bit more, like we discussed and showing more of their body, then this may be an opportunity to get a crack and keep this team more at bay right here, right? You don't want to necessarily put yourself on equal footing, but as you're moving in, remember to use those pillboxes, find cover where you can. Even this is really, really strong right here compared to them peaking the full angle. 
So now what we're going to do, let's go into the test range and kind of recap this. This is a lot of information, and I hope that all of you guys can really take something away here. And if you guys want, I mean, I'm definitely down to do more VOD reviews in the future and point this out more in your gameplay. It's a simple concept. It's not flashy, but you can pair it with flash like we discussed when using movement. If you want to peek somebody who's on a wide angle, let's say they're right around the corner there, but you need to get the jump on them, and then you wall bounce towards them and secure that knock because you know you have that ability. This is where you can time movement to be aggressive but this is where you can time move it to be defensive to get to where you need to be and bounce around and get to that cover and then back up to the position that you need to let's go into the test range and go and wrap up today's video if you found this video helpful don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe at this portion i'm going to kind of reiterate a few of the points but also hit them pretty hard just because i want you guys to step away and remember these tips so let's kind of go over the basics of what we discussed in third person just so you see it in the test range so you can practice it yourself having cover like this is going to be a lot stronger because only my body is like my head is really peeking out versus an angle like this where half my body is exposed and i would rather use a box like this just as an, a basic example now, the same thing when you're looking to breach and even shoot opponents that you can use hills and geometry to gain you that advantage. But once you realize that you've kind of already peaked a spot and they have knowledge on you, you want to repeak a different spot to get the jump on them. Repeaking angles is very, very important. Now, remember, there's only so many different variables that individual players can peek. So let's recap that again still here. They can peek from the door. They can peek from this side. They can peek at the window. They can peek at this side. They can peek at this side. Or they can peek from the roof if they're holding the building and they want to fight you. So remember where they can shoot from, but also when you look at this, where you can potentially shoot from. Now, that's not ideal there, but this angle right here is very powerful as you're working your way in because their full body is going to be exposed. And keeping in mind your hitbox versus theirs and how you can win that encounter to at least get the jump on them is really important. Don't make the game easier for them. Make it harder. And what you may notice is that a lot of other players are making the game much harder for you, but you're making it much easier for them if you decide to stand out in the open and just keep blasting versus if you have the skill and aim and you start to back up and start using really smart positioning to get the jump on the opponent as you see moving up here with even just a sniper and yes you're gonna have to close the gap but you're hoping by this point that they're healing and you have five four three two one and then you have the space to secure it but they don't know exactly where you're at and hopefully you'll surprise the opponent and get the jump on them and be able to secure your knock and elimination so again, I hope this video is helpful. I know that's kind of a bit of a recap at the end of the video, but I really deem it very important, this subject, because I see it happen a lot, and specifically in ranked, when I get eliminations and players just don't know where to play. If you don't know where to play, look at your VOD and ask yourself why you were there and whether or not there was good positioning to peek from and whether you can counter or not. Those are the steps you should start thinking about and how you should be moving and maintaining momentum and not staying in the same spot twice. Don't stay in the same spot twice. Just keep pushing forward and finding different angles. And if you do, remember the basic scenarios if you're caught in a bad scenario. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys all in the next video.